Hello everybody, I'm Kyle Pittman with Pittman Bullets and this is J.R. Schultz with Schultz Precision Rifles. And we're here today to talk to you about high performance uh, muzzleloading. And um, here in front of us we have a recent build that J.R. has put together uh, for a customer. Uh, it has an AG composite stock, a Brux barrel, Mesa Summit muzzleloader action. And um, it also is topped with the Night Force uh, five and a half by 22 scope. So I'll let JR take it over from here and uh, let JR tell you what it took to put this build together, why he chose the components that he chose to put it together and expectations that the customer should be able to fulfill with this rifle and, um, and what type of performance he should expect. So JR, take it from here. This particular rifle's got a a uh, carbon fiber AG composite stock. Started shooting the, uh, the carbon fiber stocks like the, the Mesa Precision carbon fiber stocks. It's just like a pound and a half. It's the lightest, most durable, strongest stock I've ever shot. Uh, something about it, it, it litigates the recoil. It, it, you actually have less felt recoil even though the rifles are a lot lighter. Uh, it's just it's just unreal how strong they really are, and uh, of course we use the Mesa Precision Summit muzzle loader action. Got the uh, the bolt stop has been moved at a proper place so you can load your modules easy. Uh, we're talking about the the fly cut bolt, so the uh, the modules just slide in and out very easily. It has a uh, Field scrippable firing pin in case you're ever in a uh, very messy environment, you get a misfire or something, and you need to clean your firing pin. <clears throat> Stainless uh, Brux 45 caliber, 1 in 20 barrel. It's uh, 26 inches. Got one of our muzzle brakes that we make uh, on it. The finish is. is the rifle's fully nitrided, the bolt, action, barrel, brake, uh, everything's fully nitrided on it. The, that's the toughest, most durable finish I've ever seen. It, we won't allow it to rust, it doesn't wear, it just lasts forever. Of course, we put a night force on it. Uh, we can do them in 40s, 45s, 50s, whatever caliber it needs to be. Uh, we can do a variety of fluting. This one's spiral, or this one's a hybrid interrupted, but we can do spiral or straight flutes or straight interrupted, whatever. Uh, you can leave the rifle stainless and be blasted or cerakoted, uh, pretty much any kind of pattern that you can think of, any colors, uh, or do the nitride finish. If you're going to really beat it up and take it in the rough conditions and, and use it a lot, I would I would recommend a nitride finish. I'm running the Hankins ignition in it. Uh, I've used other ignitions in the past and, and after doing a lot of measuring and just really examining both of them, I, I feel like this is definitely the way to go. And uh, it's, it's proven to be ridiculously accurate and consistent. Uh, we, we've shown that for the past two years, every match we went to, uh, one of our rifles has either tied for first place twice, mm -hmm. or it has been first place in every single match. And uh, a lot of that goes into the components, what we're using and, and definitely how we put them together. You know, being a machinist for 32 years, uh, we kind of learned a thing or two that your average gunsmith guy doesn't pick up as far as indicating perfectly straight, cutting proper threads, keeping everything indexed and head spaced, and, and just everything that we do to it is a little different from average builders. But uh, you can take either one of these rifles, these are just the hunting model rifles. 275 grain, 300 grain, or a 325 grain bullet past 3,000 feet a second if, if, if 
you need to for whatever purpose. Uh, we take them to the range, we test fire everything. I shoot a, once it's zero, I shoot a five shot group with whatever bullet the customer's wanting. I'll shoot a five shot group with it. If I can't make a consistent ragged hole, it doesn't leave the shop until it does. But if we keep everything put together absolutely perfectly straight, they'll shoot a ragged hole every time. One thing on high performance muzzle loading, um, high performance muzzle loading doesn't necessarily mean high velocity or smokeless powder. So um, this particular rifle the JRS put together, um, he's built rifles that look identical to this, uh, very, very similar, um, that are shooting Blackhorn 209 and uh, a lot of competitors up at Friendship Indiana uh, shooting the M NMLRA events up there uh, are actually shooting um, they they have to shoot Blackhorn 209 or Black Powder uh, propellant um, or Black Powder uh, proof substitute and those particular rifles set up that way are shooting to say for example uh, a 300 grain bullet anywhere in the ballpark of 22 to what about 22 2400 feet per second we're well, running a, a 300 grain pitman bullet uh 110 grains of blackhorn by weight and it's uh it's 2480 feet per second with a 300 grain bullet yeah and it'll it'll shoot now actually there is no difference in the rifles I, you know this particular rifle we built, he's going to run smokeless in it. He's going to hunt everywhere with it, but he, he can also drop black horn powder straight in this rifle with that ignition system. It, it works perfectly. There's, there's no difference in the rifles at all. It's just the powder that you run in it. You know, if we run 94.3 grains of 8208, that's 300 grain bullets, basically 2,900 to 3,000 feet a second from a 26 inch barrel. I ran the other the numbers the other night. My brother-in-law was interested in getting into high performance muzz loading and he drew a, uh, he actually drew a tag for New Mexico uh, this year. And he was kind of asking some questions, you know, what are these rifles capable of? How far can you deliver 1500 foot pounds of kinetic energy with one of these rifles shooting Blackhorn 209? So I had never really put a pencil and paper to it. So. Um, I said, hang on. I said, let me do some figuring. I said, I'll get back with you. So um, I got out my, my iPhone with the ballistics app and started plugging in some velocities and actually uh, plugged in 2475 feet per second with a 300 grain bullet. And I generated some, uh, uh, an actual drop table. And at 500 yards, it was 1,496 foot pounds of kinetic energy. So it's right there at that 1,500 foot pounds mark. So these rifles are definitely capable of delivering that energy with Blackhorn 209 at that distance. Uh, with smokeless powder, with a higher muzzle velocity, you would be able to deliver more energy further on out, not necessarily saying we indoor shooting a particular distance or even further than a particular distance. Um, you know, when you're hunting, you try to get as close to the animal as you can. That's, that's part of the hunt. But these rifles will definitely reach out when the situation uh, arises if you have the shooting skills and you've made the shots before on paper and you've made the particular shot you're trying to shoot in the field. These rifles definitely have the capability to deliver. Um, with smokeless powder, like JR was saying, the, the same bullet, 300 gram bullet, you could actually push that same bullet to 30, well out of this rifle with the 26 inch barrel, you could push it to about 31, 25 feet per second. Um, if you have a close shot, that is not the load you wanna be shooting. Um, I, I would not consider shooting at an animal with that particular load and, until that animal was probably 250 yards or beyond. So um, you have to put things in perspective. These rifles are very, very powerful. Yeah, they're, they're very extreme. And the, uh, the energy that they put onto an animal is immediately evident. Uh, they, they, 
just I've seen video after video customers have sent 300 yard elk I mean just crumbling before you hear the rifle go off uh, deer you get probably more pictures than anybody but I get tons of pictures of deer that are just devastated you just have to pick your shot and and just understand that these are definitely not the old factory muzzle loaders uh, they're, they're real world monsters is the best way I know to put it for you. JR said it <clears throat> JR said it in a nutshell these are definitely not not a regular muzzleloader they're definitely not an off-the-shelf factory muzzleloader um, and gunsmiths that are building these muzzle loaders would not be building these muzzle loaders if it wasn't for this ignition system right here. This ignition system is what is what makes it make makes it possible for these rifles to be built, and it holds the pressures uh, that these rifles produce. This particular breech plug is a five eighths by eighteen Hankins ignition system breech plug using the three hundred eight bolt face <clears throat> excuse me three hundred eight bolt face modules. And inside of the breech plug, when it is assembled, it will have a tungsten bushing. Uh, this particular bushing is about 40 thousandths right now. I believe this bushing's been shot a time or two. We put a, put a pin gauge on it here a minute ago and it measured right at 40, 41 thousandths. Come out of my big gun, that's had a lot yeah. of powder run through it. You'll get a lot of shots out of these bushings. Um, for the most part, most people will never shoot a bushing out. Um, hundreds of shots uh, that you'll get out of the bushing. Shots. Yeah. So you'll get a lot, a lot of shots out of these bushings, but this is what makes it possible. And this is, this is how it differs from an off-the-shelf muzzleloader. Um, also, like JR was, was stating earlier, uh, the Brooks barrel on, on this particular rifle is 1250 for five inches and it's designed to, have to contain all the pressures in the barrel. So it gives you a lot more meat right where your powder is igniting and where your, your pressure curve is at. You know? Right, so when gunsmiths uh, and, and builders build these rifles and when they endorse them for smokeless powder, they are, uh, they're doing so on an individual basis as the rifle is built they know from previous experience and previous uh, builds what a rifle is capable of withstanding and most of them have their own loads that they recommend. But do not shoot smokeless powder in any off-the-shelf muzzleloader, folks. It just will not withstand the, the pressure. So if you're shooting smokeless, make sure that the builder that builds your rifle um, understand what it takes to contain the pressure. Yes. And, uh, unless you have a lot of money to spend and really good medical insurance you want to try out. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're completely next level. Getting into a little bit more about about what makes these rifles uh, shoot so accurate, um, we talked about the ignition system that withstands the pressures to uh, uh, shoot the propellants we're shooting in these rifles. Um, next, I'd like, like to talk about the bullets and and how you prepare the bullets to, um, to load in your rifle. So here we have a <clears throat> adjustable sizing die that is designed to shoot, uh, actually designed to resize the bullets uh, so that you can shoot them in these high performance guns. And essentially what you're doing is you're taking the bullet and you're reducing the size of the bullet by running it through what I refer to as a bypass die. So this die has one hole in, one hole out. It is passing through the die and as you tighten the nut on top, you're able to constrict the passageway on the exit, which will in turn make the bullet smaller when it comes out. And so you will adjust the bullet size so that you can push it down the barrel uh, with your ramrod uh, to the particular tension you want. Generally, I would say it's going to be a light to a medium arm of pressure uh, pushing the bullet down the barrel. Um, maybe not so much tension if the barrel is, is perfectly clean. So 
if you can get, generally speaking, if you can get, can get the bearing surface of the bullet to start down the rifling with the thumb and a finger of pressure, you're getting pretty close on your sizing die and you can size up a few bullets and get them to, uh, to get the first few shots off on your rifle. So the way you use your sizing die, this is a sizing die stem and it will go into a reloading press. Um, most people use a, a no frame style press like a RCBS rock chucker or a Hornady type press, a bench mounted press with a handle. And you will take your sizing die and you will screw it in the top of the press. So it's going to be over your sizing die stem on the rim. You're going to take your bullet, set it on top of the sizing die stem. Your die is going to be above it and you're going to pull the handle and it's going to force your bullet through the die. It's going to eject out the top. When it ejects out the top, it's going to be smaller in size. You're going to keep on making adjustments until you can get the fit that we discussed earlier. And then you're going to be able to go to the range um, or go where you're going to shoot your rifle. And you're going to be able to make small adjustments to get the fitting that you're looking for. Now, when, the, when everything, <clears throat> I'm going to explain a little bit the, about the process of what goes on um, when you pull the trigger. So. When your powder is in the gun and your bullet is sitting in front of your powder charge and your primer goes off and you have ignition on your primer, you're going to ignite your powder. Your powder is going to turn to gas from back to front towards uh, pushing towards the bullet. As the bullet encounters that increase in pressure and increase in gas hitting it in the back of the bullet, the bullet is going to go through a process called obturation. Obturation is the forceful expansion of the bullet into the rifle. So your bullet is going to uh, essentially expand from back to front along the bearing surface and it's going to engage the rifling as it's traveling down the barrel and as it goes down the barrel it's going to grab the rifling and the bullet is going to spin. So the faster you can get a bullet spinning uh, down a barrel, the more accurate the bullet is going to be for a couple of reasons. Uh, the most important reason, as your bullet goes down the barrel, if it's not fully engaged in the rifling, your rifling is going to act as a file on the bullet jacket and that's going to deform your bullet jacket. So you want to get your bullet spinning as quickly as you can, hitting it in the seat of the pants having it to the proper size um, and that is going to cause it to engage the rifling quicker. Now some, some muzzle loaders with some loads you might not be shooting smokeless powder or you might be shooting a reduced load of smokeless powder or you might be shooting a black powder substitute and in that situation instead of the bullet setting on top of the powder you will have um, either a wool wad or a vegetable fiber wad between the powder charge and the bullet. And what that does, that acts as a gas check so that the gases that's produced by the powder going off uh, won't slip by the bullet as, as forcefully. If you have forceful gases slipping by a bullet going down the grooves, it makes it harder for that bullet to expand out and grab the rifling and therefore it would take a longer travel distance before that bullet would expand out and grab the rifling. So with the wad, you're actually reducing the blow by gases. You're reducing the amount of bullet travel distance before it engages the rifling and therefore you're making the bullet shoot more accurate. That is not needed if you're hitting the bullet in the seat of the pants with a good with a good charge. So for the most part, guys that shoot um, stiff charges of smokeless powder, they don't shoot wads. Um, generally speaking, the guys that shoot substitute propellants like Blackhorn, I think pretty much all those guys shoot Yeah, every match we go to, we, we have to run the, we all shoot wool wads with Blackhorn and uh, perform fantastic that way. 
I have a 40 caliber that I shoot what I refer to as elephant loads of powder in that gun. And um, I have to shoot a bull wad in that gun each and every shot. Um, if I don't, the bullet's gonna come out sideways and hit the target sideways. So they're, these muzzle loaders are different from gun to gun. Um, there's no set in stone, yes, this is, going, this is going to do good for all guns. So I recommend that people, if you're shooting a, shooting a reduced load or a um, substitute propellant, try wad, see if, it, see if it makes your gun shoot more accurate. Um, if you're shooting a 40 caliber, I tell most people they're going to shoot more accurate with a, with a wad than without. So in general, if you're shooting a 40 caliber, or reduce loads, I recommend trying the wads. I'm not saying they're definitely gonna make your gun perform better, but it's a general rule they do. My 40 caliber that I, that I hunt with now, with the 312s, uh, without a wad, it'll shoot a five shot, maybe seven sixteenths MOA, but with the wad in it, it'll shoot a five shot less than one quarter MOA. So it, it, the watts making a very noticeable difference in that rifle. That's, that's, that's precision right there. So it was it was devastating on, on a few animals this past fall. Mm -hmm. Talking about animals, one thing I'd like to talk, uh, talk about, and if you've talked with me on the phone, customers, I, I know some of y'all may have heard uh, this analogy I like to put out there, but um, every year I have customers that will call and talk bullet performance. Sometimes it's before the fact, sometimes it's after the fact. Um, I've had a few customers call from, call from the tree stand or call from um, actually recovering a deer in the field and they're standing over their deer and they say, Mr. Pittman, I want to talk to you a little bit about your bullets and they're whispering. So I can tell right away they're in the field, they're, they, they're hunting. But um, I'm like, all right, tell, tell me what happened. They're like, well, I blew my deer up. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about, about your gun here. I'm like, what bullet are you shooting? And they might say, oh, I'm shooting 275. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, how far away was your deer? 30 yards. I'm like, okay. I said, how fast are you shooting? 3,000 feet a second. And I'm like, well, that's, that's your problem. You know, I said, there is such a thing as being overgunned. And um, the analogy I like to, like to talk to people about is, uh, I'll ask them, I'll, I'll say, have you ever been squirrel hunting with a shotgun? And they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, been, been squirrel hunting many times with a shotgun. And I said, well, I said, I said, if you're going squirrel hunting, I said, uh, would you take a 410 or a 10 gauge? And they'll think about it for a second and they'll say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a 410. And I said, but hang on just a second. I said, there's one thing I didn't tell you. I said, that squirrel is 80 yards away. And they sit there and they think about it just for a second. And they go, oh, okay, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the 10 gauge. I said, okay. I said, all right. I said, so you shot the squirrel 80 yards away. I said, but as soon as you shot that squirrel 80 yards away, I said, another squirrel just jumped out at 20 yards and you just shot it. I'm like, what happened to your squirrel you shot at 20 yards? And then two and two clicks together in their mind and they understand what I'm trying to tell them. So you can be overgunned um, in a particular situation with a particular gun, a particular powder charge, and a particular bullet. Um, generally speaking, these guns, especially the ones shooting smokeless powder at higher velocities, they're really intended for shooting animals at medium to long ranges. Um, Way I explain it to people, I, a lot of people call in and everybody's looking for 3,000 feet a second and they don't really understand the ballistics. So the way I describe it to people is the starter load on one of these rifles 
275 bullet, 68 grains of 41.98. That's a tick over 2,800 feet a second most of the time. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like a lot until I asked them if they would deer hunt with my 338 Lahua mm -hmm. because the load, the, the starter load out of this rifle is a, the same bullet weight at a slightly higher velocity mm -hmm. than my 338 Lahua. And that's the starter load. Mm -hmm. So it goes up drastically from there. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I approach the same analogy, not only with the shotgun, but like a 375 H&H &H Magnum. Um, a 375 H&H &H Magnum is the legal minimum cartridge that a lot of uh, outfitters will let you use in Africa to hunt Big Five. Mm -hmm. And a 375 H&H &H Magnum with a 300 grain bullet, a 24 inch safari rifle barrel, is shooting a three uh, a three hundred grain bullet at about 2760, 2780 feet per second. So these smokeless muzzle loaders, these high performance muzzle loaders, are often dwarfing the energy of a three thirty eight Lapua and a three seventy five H and H Magnum. So and in some cases they'll dwarf a, a four oh eight Shea Tech, four sixteen Barrett. Yeah. They're very they can be very devastating, so when you have those close shots, um, number one, don't shoot the animal in the shoulder. Number two, shoot the animal further back. And number three, expect devastation. These these guns are, are very very devastating if you're using using them for a purpose really than other what they were designed for. They're really designed for for long range or extended uh, medium long range application so um, they get the job done very well for that but just uh, don't feel if you're hunting in a situation where you're hunting closer range that you have to load one up at at even 2800 feet per second um, your gunsmith that put your gun together um, is going to be able to recommend a load for you to get your velocity way down there where you're not going to be destroying your animals if, if you're hunting in a situation at closer range. You know, some people just want to get away from from black powder, black powder substitutes and go to a smokeless powder just for the ease of cleaning. And if that's you, you don't have to shoot 3,000 feet per second. So you might be as better off shooting 22 to 2,400 feet per second with smokeless powder and that's very doable. So don't feel that just because you get one of these rifles, don't, don't feel like you have to set it up to shoot 3,000 feet per second like you see somebody else doing. Because the faster you load it, the more devastating it will be. Anything else you want to talk about? I think it's about it on these. So. Well, folks, we're going to wrap up this segment on uh, on these high-performance muzzle loaders. Again, I'm Kyle Pittman with Pittman Bullets, and this is J.R. Schultz with Schultz Precision Rifles. And uh, we hope you have learned a little bit um, about the introduction on these uh, high performance guns. If you're interested in a high performance build, uh, check out JR Schultz. Um, JR, JR has a website and Facebook page. I'll let JR tell you about those. It's uh, Schultz Precision Rifles on Facebook, and uh, SchultzPrecisionRifles.com is the website. It's kind of hard to uh, to upload to a particular website, so we pretty much put everything on the Facebook page now. It's a lot easier, a lot faster access. Folks, we hope you learned something today, and uh, we'll be doing future segments, um, actually some range segments, and uh, also some segments on some more details about sizing your bullets and uh, building drop charts and actually showing you how to build drop, drop charts in the field, um, how to calculate your ballistic coefficient in the field for your rifle, and probably shoot some gongs out to 500 or, or even further and, and do some demonstrations. So until we see each other again, uh, y'all have a good day and thank you very much.